Hello friends, this video on air and water pollution part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about the industrial emissions because we saw that the emission from industry is one of the major cause of air pollution. So what do they release? So they primarily release sulfur dioxides and nitrogen dioxides which turn out to be extremely harmful. So let us see what they so let us take up sulfur dioxides first. So these sulfur dioxides, they are colorless, they do not have any color. However, they have a pungent smell. So you cannot detect them with, by their color, but you can definitely detect them by their smell. The peculiarity or the characteristic of sulfur dioxide is that it reacts very easily with other small substances which might be present in the atmosphere to form acids like H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid or sulfurous acid that is H2SO3 or sulfate particles can be released. So these are some of the things which can be formed by these sulfur dioxides and if you look at each of them and now what happens to these acids. Now when these acids are present in the atmosphere or in the air, where are they present actually? So these acids, they remain stuck in the clouds and those clouds when they precipitate or when they fall on the surface as rain, so the rain contains these acids and that, that, that's how the rain becomes acid rain and acid rain is again extremely harmful. So we will discuss about acid rain in the next slide. So you can understand that these sulfur dioxides ultimately result in acid rain. So that is one disadvantage. Secondly, what happens to these sulfur particles? These sulfur particles are again small, extremely tiny particles. So these particles can be in the breathable particulate material. So whatever we are breathing in. Now, when we breathe in, we cannot breathe in a big stone, right? So if particles are very big in size, so the chances are very less that we will be breathing it in because the, uh, the passage in our nostrils is quite small. So it will only allow tiny particles to get in. Now these sulfate particles being tiny, there are high chances that they can be breathed in. So it is quite possible that when we breathe in, they will enter inside our body. Now what can happen if they enter inside our body? So if they enter our body, you know what can they do? They can do a lot of stuff. They can cause irritation to our nose and throat because that, that's the passage of all those particles. So wherever the particle passes through, it will cause some or the other damage to that part. So primarily it will affect the nose and the throat. It can also affect the chest. It can affect the breathing. So you might have shortness of breath, coughing, nose irritation, throat irritation. You might feel quite tight around your chest. So your entire respiratory system gets affected because that's where your breathing is related to. So that's how sulfur dioxide can affect you and that, that's how it can be harmful. So it can cause cough, it can cause irritation in nose and throat. So nose and throat irritation can be caused. It can also affect your chest. So some discomfort around your chest. So these are some of the consequences that might happen if these sulfate particles enter inside your body. Now you might think that what activity goes inside an industry that results in the production of sulfur dioxide. So how sulfur dioxide is produced inside the industries. Now industrial activity processes many particles which contain sulfur. For example, what, what do you think can happen inside an industry? Now different industries deal with different stuffs. But when you talk about an industry, there might be electricity generation industry from coal, oil or gas. Now each of these, whether you talk about coal, oil or gas, they all contain sulfur. So when you try to process them, so sulfur dioxides are released. Similarly, if you talk about industries which process mineral ores, so mineral ores also contain sulfur. So processing of mineral ores also lead to the formation of sulfur dioxide. So handling these kind of stuffs inside an industry can very easily lead to the production of sulfur dioxide. Now let us talk about nitrogen dioxide. So again, these are also equally harmful as sulfur dioxide. So we mostly get nitrogen dioxide by burning of fossil fuels like 
coal, oil, gas, diesel, petrol, etc. at very high temperature. So when we heat them or when we burn them at very high temperature, so they are produced by burning of fossil fuels at a very high temperature. So that's how it is produced. So what can we try to do to reduce the production of nitrogen dioxide? We should try to use less fossil fuels. We should try to use less coal, oil, diesel. We should try to minimize their usage because if we use them less, that means we need them less. If we need them less, then we need to produce them less. So if they are produced in lesser amount, then nitrogen dioxide will also be released in lesser amount. So a simple logic. Now and what do these particles do? Now these nitrogen dioxide also they easily mix with particles which are, pair, which are present in the air and that's how it can pollute it. So nitrogen dioxide can also form various acids like nitric acids, HNO3. So these kind of acids again can fall in the form of acid rain. So they also cause several harmful effects in human beings if by chance they are inhaled in like cough, lungs infection, asthma, respiratory infection. So the respiratory system gets damaged if, we, if anything containing sulfate or nitrogen is being taken inside our body. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.